Hey folks, uh, today we're going to look at Alaska and we're going to look at the opportunities and challenges of um, Alaska as our case study for a cold environment. So if we just put that at the top of your page, so we've got our title, opportunities and challenges because um, AQA require you to know both of a cold environment. But this is the section of the paper where you need to choose um, whether you do a cold environment or you do hot deserts. Um, for my students we always do a cold environment and I teach two. I teach Svalbard in um, the northern uh, reaches of Norway uh, up in the Arctic Circle and we also look at Alaska. Um, you can see my Svalbard video uh, separately on the channel, but this one, this one's focusing on Alaska. Alaska's a great case study for this one. Um, so let's go through it. Now, Alaska is um, a funny shape. It's got a really straight border with Canada. And then it's all a bit wiggly. Now, don't worry if you, if it's not going to be perfect. Mine isn't perfect. Just, just follow my pen and try and create some, uh, some sort of rough wiggles of your own. It really doesn't matter. It's got a lot of coastline. It's got a kind of sticky out bit here and it's got a kind of a natural bay there and, and that'll kind of do. And it kind of goes off here. This is the border with Canada and that is Alaska. Okay, if you want to, you can just add a little bit more in there. But really don't worry if it's not, <laughs> it's not exactly the same as mine. It, it does not matter. Right, we're going to look at the opportunities on this side and then the challenges kind of on this side. And I'm just going to talk you through everything you might need to know in a summary for your case study using Alaska. Right, the main thing uh, that we need to look at for opportunities is, is e thinking about economic development here and jobs and, and so on. The biggest thing has to be oil. So if you draw kind of an oil rig. Now, oil is drilled up here in the Arctic because there's lots of oil. Um, it doesn't all spurt out the top, but let's just draw it like that. It's kind of like that, it's kind of cool. Um, and it's it's basically drilled and mined um, up, in, up in the Arctic where there's lots of it in a place called Prudhoe Bay. So if I write that there, Prudhoe Bay. If you've ever seen like ice road truckers or anything like that, that's that's the area. It's super icy. The sea up here, this is the Arctic up here, it's, it's frozen over. There is no way of getting this oil down to kind of the USA, the USA is down this way, um, without piping it along the country. You can't put it in a boat and just um, drive it around because of the sea ice. It's not possible. So what they've done is quite clever really, um, is that they've built this um, trans-Alaskan um, pipeline. So you can, it's, you can write that on there, trans-Alaskan pipeline. Now it's huge, it goes all the way across Alaska and it basically carries the oil. Um, it's up on stilts which is brilliant because it allows wildlife to move underneath it and it's heated to prevent blockages. It's, it bends so that it can resist earthquakes. It does a lot of clever things. Um, and it goes down to a place called Valdez. And when it gets to Valdez, you see the oil, excuse my rudimentary boats, um, the oil can be put onto big container ships and this happens every day of the week, but they're on their way then to the USA where it can be used uh, easily because it's not frozen down here. There is some permafrost, there is some ice, but it's it's from far, far less. Whereas up in the Arctic, uh, very high reaches of Alaska, um, it's permanently frozen. It's also really, really hard to get to. Now, oil isn't the only way that Alaskans make money. It's not the only thing that contributes to their, um, their sort of gross domestic product. Another thing is um, wildlife. Alaska is beautiful and it's an incredible place to go and visit. And you can actually see whales 
we just draw a whale uh, with a nice big tail. There we go. Um, maybe just having a little um, this little blowhole. Uh, if we draw the whales now, visitors, particularly you know retired people, people with money um, and time, or uh, or youngsters travelling the world, will go and visit these whales. Two million people every year, and that that number is rising. Um, go and visit the whales, and they bring with them much needed revenue now. One of the main issues, though, is that a lot of these visitors um, travel on cruise ships. And apart from the cruise ships being quite polluting, um, the money tends to stay on board. So they will hop off, they might, um, you know, take a day trip and go and see some rivers or, uh, I don't know, some brown bears. Let's draw a bear. Um, but the very often, sorry, worst bear ever, uh, let's have a big nose, looks like a mouse. Um, uh, but yeah, they might go and see some wildlife like, that's right, brown bears, because you're going to look at that and think, what is it? Um, they might go and see the wildlife, but they will then pop back on the boat and eat a nice meal. And, you know, they're not actually spending money in the region. Um, but, you know, it does contribute to the economy. Um, these waters, when they're not frozen, so a bit further down, are very rich. Cold waters has to do with the um, marine biology of, of cold waters, but they're very rich in nutrients. And um, so they are fished hugely. Uh, very, very popular fishing grounds. And um, including things like salmon. Let me just draw a big fishing net to remind you. And we'll write the word. Fishing. So fishing's a big one. Really is actually uh, a really big one for... Sorry, these are supposed to be fish. There we go. Um, it provides 78,000 jobs um, to the local economy. When I say local, I mean Alaska. Uh, and it's not pounds, but it's... In, if you were to do the equivalent, that is six billion pounds per year towards their GDP. So a huge amount of money as well um, from fishing. Obviously that fish doesn't stay in Alaska and much of it is exported. Um, next up, uh, mining. Let's not forget mining. Now mining, um, if we draw it over here, shall we? Um, so mining, things like copper, silver, um, gold are all minerals that can be found in the ground. Now. Mining's less common these days. That's the torch. Uh, but it uh, still happens in Alaska, just like a bit less than it did. This is a, supposed to be a miner <laughs> uh, with its pickaxe. There we go. Um, and that is mining. So let's put it up here. Mining. And then that's for gold, silver copper and that contributes to one fifth of um, the GDP for Alaska so it's it's still worth mentioning I guess is what I'm trying to say but you wouldn't talk about it as its main uh, source of revenue um, so these are the opportunities and they're mainly I'm gonna write the word economic okay trying to make money out of this cold environment but unfortunately, it is a cold environment, so it hasn't been developed as fully as it maybe would have been if it was less cold. So let's get in some challenges. I hope I've done enough arrows there. Right. Okay. Firstly, we've got the extreme cold. Temperatures can get to minus 30, minus 40. That's degrees Celsius regularly so it, that really prevents and hinders a lot of um, developments that would have occurred otherwise now something that they've done to cope with that this is the pipeline I'm drawing here um, not very well uh, is they have raised the pipeline 
up on stilts. Now most pipelines and most non-cold environments will go under the ground, you don't see them, they're just, they're dug into the ground. But that can't happen because of the extreme cold and also the permafrost. Permafrost is quite fragile, it's a frozen layer of land that needs to remain frozen, otherwise if it doesn't you have really big problems, like for instance houses, I'm just going to draw a house tipping over here, um, start to basically slide, fall over, you might get kind of cracks in them. Um, and that's because, you know, an area of the permafrost has started to thaw. So we need to make sure that we're not um, damaging the permafrost, for example, with the pipeline. The pipeline is also, it's very clever, something else they've done, I'll show you on this side. Um, they've heated the, pot, the actual oil to 49 degrees Celsius which isn't super hot if you think about your oven at home you know that's a quarter of the temperature you'd cook a pizza or something you've put in the oven for say 200 degrees it's a quarter of that temperature but it's just warm enough to allow the oil to move freely and it basically prevents blockages if the oil freezes it's going to cause a blockage if it causes a blockage, you're going to get a backup of oil coming through. It's going to put strain on the pipeline. It's going to potentially break the pipe. And then you've got an oil spill, which is a really big issue. The other thing is there are bends in the pipe. They have purposefully kind of built it so that it has um, a natural sort of kink to it to make the oil move further through the pipe. Uh, and that's because of there's a risk of earthquakes so bends in the pipe you can't see it on my picture but it's much clearer if you see a photograph of it but bends in the pipe to resist um, earthquakes so there's a lot of like management things that they've thought about here uh, another issue is the constant darkness so for eight months of the year it's pitch black and then for four months it's constant sunshine now the four months is okay development can occur really well in that time but in the darkness it can lead to kind of a l less economic development for obvious reasons you know having to light everything you're doing also, there's kind of health and safety issues and risks associated there. Right, the final one, the final challenge is to do with wildlife. Now, moose, elk uh, live in Alaska. They are huge. They have these long noses and um, very furry. Uh, and they're beautiful. And there's thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them. And they cross the pipeline to get to, I'm going to put this bit in red, okay, I wasn't going to use red today, but I've decided I will, um, they cross Alaska, I'm going to use red because I've kind of accidentally drawn over the bit I wanted, to get to Anwar. Now, Anwar, A-N-W-R, is the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Now this is a safe place, really safe place, where they can breed. And the elk do, that's where they migrate to, to actually have their babies. Um, so it's really important that that pipeline is raised off the ground and allows the migrations to kind of continue underneath. Um, this area is full of oil. You can see how close it is to Prudhoe Bay, how close it is to that pipeline. And there have been politicians in America in the past who, who would like to drill for oil there, President Trump being one of them. Uh, but currently the situation as it stands is um, it's not being drilled. But that's something that pops up in the news quite often. It's often known as the last great wilderness. And that's because of its natural beauty. And for wildlife, I can't believe I wasn't going to do this, I'm going to do it now. Let's just draw um, really badly 
an elk. Uh, it's got a really big nose, a bit like a horse. Oh my god, this might be my worst ever drawing. It looks, yeah, it really does. I'm going to try and add some flair to it, see if that makes things better. Not much. Right, elk. There we go. And we need to put in brackets migration route. Or migration, yeah, migration route. There we go. So the elk travel either side of the pipeline. Right, there you go. So that's Alaska with its opportunities and challenges and a little bit there in terms of the management as well. So if you do get a nine marker on this one, um, you should hopefully be able to, well, get you started anyway. Best of luck. Well done.